Jan Egenfelder with Viking Engines. We're standing here in front of a Sea Ray that has one of your engines installed. Is this a recent installation for you? It is. Uh, Viking Aircraft Engines decided that uh, we uh, would take on the heavy, heaviest beast in the light sport aircraft class, which was the Sea Ray. They got a hundred pound extra allowance and they take off from water. And sometimes these sea rays come off from water at high altitude and there's high temperatures and it's definitely the most demanding application for an engine. It's like the engine that could when you put it on a sea ray. And this is the LSX, which is their large new version with a bigger tail. It's overall heavier, leather interior, the whole nine yards. And the owner of this, Chris Lang, had a classic before with a 912 Rotex and he was happy with it. But even though he's got a heavier airplane now, he says it outperforms it, it's smoother and he's just as happy as can be flying it around. So Jan, what is new with Viking engines since we last talked? A lot of new things. The engine is nicer, it's lighter, we've got a tuned intake manifold on it, and details, lots of details, but I gotta tell you, the real big picture is that we truly believe now we're gonna go, and this might sound crazy to those people that still call us an auto conversion, because we're not, you know, we designed this engine around this Honda block to be a true aircraft engine three years ago, and now it's really coming through. Uh, we're working now with the uh, manufacturers. They're, they're, you know, like Kit Fox and Zenit and stuff, and they're like really working directly with us. And, uh, and this is a big step when you go and you uh, kind of continue on dealing with the customers, but you also are talking directly with the manufacturer. Uh, and we have decided that we will take Rotax on head to head. And we're uh, thinking that as far as the Sonics and the Zenits and uh, and uh, those kinds of planes, we're going to outnumber the Rotax in a year or two. What will be the determining factor for people who are building those planes to go with this engine as opposed to a competitor? Well, you know, we've flown it for 530 hours now, and clearly it is holding together really well. Chris Lang has an article uh, that explains it well, which is the owner of this airplane on our website. He says, I flew my 912 on the other Sea Ray, it was a good engine. This one starts easier, it stops easier without any kind of chatter. It is smoother, it has more power. It is a liquid-cooled engine instead of oil and liquid and air. It is just a pure liquid-cooled engine. It also has all the new stuff that Brotex has on their 9, uh, 912 uh, SI or the injected one. This is also injected. It's got two, two computers. Uh, it's got redundancy. Uh, solid state ignition, it's just, you know, and the basis of the engine being a Honda block, it's it's really, really working well. So that makes it a single lever control engine? Oh yeah, yeah, you don't touch a thing, and if something does go wrong, you hit one switch and you're on the backup. So just like the big boys. <laughs> and for two-thirds of the money. Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy-to-use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug-and-play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the hybrid touch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy, Avidyne. Give us an indication and, and just tell us about the experience of flying the airplane with the Viking engine. I chose this engine because I wanted something that had better cooling than I had on the engine before. I wanted a liquid cooled engine and I like fuel injection and electronic ignition. I also like uh, the way this revs up. Uh, when you push the power in on this thing, it just sets you right back in the seat and it'll get off the ground in a hurry and then I put the wheel pants on it because I wanted it to look a little classier. And then I also fly out of a 10,000 foot runway. So I'm not gonna land in the snow or the mud or anything like that. I take off in it at 5,200 RPMs. And then when I get up flying around, I throttle it back to 4,700 RPMs. And it flies along about 85 to 90 knots, which is pretty good for this kind of an airplane. Then also, if you wanna look at something, you can just put in a little flaps and give it a little more power. And then you can go down over the low places like the rivers and the lakes and things like that and fly 100 or 150 feet and look at the scenery. And that's what this airplane's really made for. Great, Vernon. Thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us on Aero TV. Okay, good. Okay, thank you.
Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Casey, you built the Sonex and you put a Viking engine in it, which is not a standard engine for this airplane. Why did you pick that engine and what's it like to fly? Well, I flew with an AeroV for about 230 hours and my mission as a pilot is about 50% cross country and much of my flying is in the mountains. So the combination of uh, mountain flying and just needing to get somewhere quickly and of course looking for speed and economy, this really made sense for me. I looked at engines for about a year and a half and I was considering the gamut of engines. I try to be very technical and precise in planning, so I had a spreadsheet that showed me the details of each engine, the positives, the negatives, and this engine came out on top for a number of reasons. What were some of those reasons? Having an engine that's FADEC, having an engine that's using technology that's been made this millennium versus the previous millennium, and looking at the balance of cost, performance, and flexibility with fuel. So I run 10% ethanol without any issues, and I can also run Avgas, I can run Mogas without ethanol, so that flexibility has been really good. It's a wonderful flying airplane, so really what I've done is I've increased the capacity and capability of my airplane based on my engine choice. Tell us a little bit about the flying characteristics with this engine. What the engines allowed me to do is a lot more short field work. I flew into a 2200 foot grass strip, stayed there for a week, had multiple approaches and landings there, and takeoffs were a non-issue even with 70 foot trees at the end. That's wonderful, being able to choose whether I want range in miles or speed and quickness to get there, since you can always throttle back, but there's only so much you can throttle up. So. By increasing the, the speed that I could do, a, a prime example is I was coming in and um, I was chasing civil twilight. I don't have any lights on the airplane, so I needed to be on the ground. And I made a fuel stop, dropped off some liquid myself, hopped back in the airplane, and firewalled it. I was able to climb up quickly, get where I was trying to be. Um, I was at about an 8.5 density altitude, and um, it just gave me some options that I didn't have previously. Casey, thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us on Aero TV. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom.